Okay, this is going to be another fun one for you guys who have watched my channel for years, especially back in the days of the Technics and the 4.8s. Um, so now that I've got the O-scope and I've got the next LCD and the dummy loads, I can go ahead and bench test any amplifier to uh, clipping to get its full power output. Now I'm sure some of you who watch my videos will be very interested to see what the old Technics amplifiers are actually capable of. Back in the day we had the 550 running the 4.8s, running all sorts of subs and it seemed to kick out loads of power, way more than rated. Off the top of my head, I think the 550 is rated for 75 RMS times two, and the 650 down there, 90 watts RMS times two. But they certainly feel like they put out a lot more power than that. So without having to pull out the amplifiers from the little setup I've got here, it's a nightmare getting them in with the wire. So um, I've literally just opened it up at the back. I only need to test one channel, um, and basically I can then multiply that by two to get a total uh, power output. Um, so I haven't had to disconnect any speakers. The main and remote channels on the Technics, they just run in parallel. So I can get away with just using one of the rear terminals uh, on the remote there to test the output of one of the channels, and we can see exactly what sort of power we're putting out. I'm going to test it at a few different frequencies, low bass frequencies and mid-range musical frequencies and see if there's a difference in the nice class AA circuitry there. So let's start with the 550, I've got it all hooked up with the dummy loads, we're going to test it at 4 ohms which is what it's rated for, 8 ohms and also 2 ohms, see where it likes its power best and I think we're going to be in for some surprises. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn peak hold on because I can't actually see the screen when I'm bending over to adjust the volume. I can see the O-scope, so let's go and turn the volume up and let's get a wave on here. And now let's roll slowly, into, slowly, slowly right to the top of where it's happy. About there. There we go. That is about the most that it'll be happy at. And that is, oh my goodness, <laughs> wow, didn't I tell you that was doing a bunch more power than it's rated for, 166 watts there, and that was running at 4 ohms on a singular channel, absolutely fantastic, what's this rated for, a 75 watts RMS, I think it is something like that, wow, fantastic. So when running this amplifier on a subwoofer with one coil per channel, uh, each coil being 4 ohms, we would definitely see um, over 300 watts RMS to the subwoofer. And um, you know, compared to the 150 watts, which we all thought is rated for, is, is double the power. Fantastic. Should we be a little bit naughty and see what it will do into a little bit of clipping? Um, I don't want to clip this amplifier too much, but... Um, Let's give it a little bit of clip there, Woo, little bit of clipping. Let's see how much power this is putting out into a little bit of clipping. 186 watts, so we're not getting as much of a jump as we did with the JBL um, car amplifier, which is quite good because we don't want it to kick out a bunch more watts into clipping. It's not very good for any of the equipment hooked up, to be honest. So that, that's good, I'm very impressed. We've got nice healthy watts there, well overrated. So now what I'm gonna do, that's a 50 hertz. I'm gonna keep it at 50 hertz. I'm gonna hook up the uh, dummy loads in a slightly different arrangement to give me two ohms and we're gonna see whether classically a lower impedance would mean a higher output or does the lower impedance actually cause the amplifier to clip earlier due to its lack of power supply? Let's have a check it out and see what it does. Okay, so I've added the second dummy load in parallel to bring the load to the single channel down to two ohms. Now let's turn the volume up again. I'll have a little less um, chance here before clipping, I think, because it will have doubled the sort of sensitivity of the volume knob at two ohms. So let's crank it up and see what we've got. Wave looks good, wave looks good. Oh, it clips earlier there, do you see that? It clipped in a slightly different way. Um, it was a lot more of a, a sort of gentle slope there. Um, we did get a reasonable amount of watts, 184. I'm gonna reset that peak hold, and I'm gonna try and catch it slightly earlier on before the clip, uh, because that was definitely a clipped peak wattage there. Let's try and catch it a little bit earlier this time. Okay, there we go. So how many watts was that? That was, that was even higher. Wow, 191 watts. Um, okay, so going by 
a uh, small test we've done here. Um, yeah, dropping it down to two ohms on the single channel gives us about um, another about so another thought of 40 watts on top there um, RMS and that was uh, just before clipping there the wave was pretty nice um, and we weren't able to get this sort of numbers even into clipping at 4 ohms so wow uh, amplifier is still on it's not it didn't it didn't click into protection um, the amps generally get quite warm anyway because they're class AA so the um, transistors are always you know on position um, so they do heat up even when idle, uh, but yeah, it's not too hot. I've had it definitely hotter than that before. Um, a little test like that won't do much for the for the, the heat anyway. Uh, but no, that is that is absolutely fantastic. Again, way more than rated power. Um, running both channels there at two ohms. If we were running a subwoofer, uh, we could see a sort of around about. Uh, 360 watts there um, to a subwoofer application very very nice so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna change it up and run it at 8 ohms and going by this test we should see less watts before clipping um, so let's just see what happens okay so last little test now on the 550 running at 8 ohms uh, I'm gonna predict we'll hit somewhere around the uh, 120 130 watts mark perhaps going by the uh, the rate of the other ones so Let's turn the volume up and start to get the wave. Now slowly run until I see clipping. Keep an eye on the peak hold there. Uh, a little bit there. Okay, so let's hold it there and cover it down. So that was ah 117 watts. I wasn't far off really, was I, with my 120 watts guess? Um, now awesome. So definitely uh, the amplifiers do behave as expected. Uh, you know, in line with the other amplifiers that you'll see. Um, the lower the load the more watts it outputs. It doesn't always work like that. Not all amplifiers do behave in that manner. Um, some of them are have more suited circuitry to one load than another. Uh, I know a lot of car amplifiers, um, they actually have a very clever power supply circuit that will deliver a very similar amount of power into four ohms, two ohms, and one ohm. Um, I know JL Audio have done a few amps like that. Um, okay, so I'm fantastically um, happy with the results from the 550. Let's move on now. and. And let's do the 650 and the difference in size between the 550 and the 650 um, I am you know quite excited to see uh, the results from the bigger amplifier there it's massive okay so now the fun starts we've got the 650 hooked up uh, and we're gonna start with 8 ohms this time and run down into the lower impedances so 8 ohms let's hit the volume knob and let's see what sort of power we're doing who guesses this will do more power at 8 ohms than the 550 did at 4? Let's keep it going. Okay, a little bit of clip there. So take it back down now. How many watts was that? <laughs> that was 163 watts at 8 ohms. What's this amplifier rated for? I might just quickly Google this. Okay, so Google tells me the 650 is rated for 90 watts into 8 ohms. Um, and so we've got on the screen here 163, which is getting on for double uh, its rated power at 8 ohms there. The 550 is 65 watts per channel at 8 ohms. Um, so yeah, we're not too far off there. That We hit about 120 watts at 8 ohms on the 550. Um, so on the O-scope here, just before clipping, they are proving to do double their rated RMS output. Now this is quite nice and I respect Technics for this because they've obviously rated their amplifiers at a very, very low uh, THD percentage uh, on the spec sheet there. So obviously we're driving it just before clipping, THD will be a little bit higher than rated, uh, but still perfectly usable up to this point you're seeing on the scope, um, very, very good power. So let's drop this down to 4 ohms then, um, which it is perfectly happy running at 4 ohms um, going by the manual, so drop it down to 4 ohms and see how much power it does. Who is guessing over 200? So we're now wired to 4 ohms, the minimum load that the manual recommends. So let's hit the volume and see what sort of power we're kicking. Okay, to clipping there, we have 236 watts on the clamp meter there. Let me reset that, I'm going to do that one more time because I saw a little bit too much clipping on the screen there for my own liking. Let's increase the sensitivity of that a little bit so I can see that a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. 
there we are, right on the mark. And uh, we are 222, all the twos. So, yes, way over 200 watts. And that is only one channel, remember, guys. So, so far, we are seeing with the two channels combined, uh, rated down to 4 ohms per channel, 440 watts RMS from this amplifier. Absolutely phenomenal. Bearing in mind, this is rated for 90 times 2 at 8 ohm. Therefore, you'd expect it to do around about... 180 just going by general types of things and uh, at 4 ohms so yeah we're seeing a good chunk over the rated RMS not quite as high um, over its rated power than the 550 but still a very good amount of watts over the manual now what we're going to do is drop it down to 2 ohms uh, on the single channel which is underneath its rated specification just to see how much power it puts out Okay, this is it. 50 hertz, 2 ohms, single channel. Let's see what it can do. Nice, amplifier is not showing any signs of struggle. And on the screen here we have 260 watts. Absolutely fantastic. So, it actually does cope with the lower impedance quite well. Now what you have to remember guys is this is actually more like the, the amplifier being hooked up to a woofer at 1 ohm due to impedance rise. When a speaker coil moves in the magnetic gap it actually induces some EMF and it adds resistance. So when you have a 2 ohm subwoofer linked up to this channel the amplifier will probably never see 2 ohms it'll always see a little bit higher and the lowest it might see is maybe 2.5 3 ohms um, but most of the time it will be seeing sort of 3 3.5 4 ohms um, depending what frequency it's playing and this is just due to the way that the speaker moves uh, impedance rise is tackled greatly by SPL competi uh, competitors um, it's a bit of a nightmare you have to design your box correctly to load the cone to prevent the cone's movement so you don't get as much box rise it's all a bit of a palaver um, but so this is actually a solid 2 ohms because it is run on the dummy loads here it is not going anywhere um, and so the amplifier is very very happy uh, putting out a nice clean wave there until clipping and the clipping is standard what I would call it's not the type of clip that you get when an amplifier is really struggling at its load um, it kind of goes all wobbly all over the place um, so no very very impressive so with both loads uh, both channels driven at 2 ohms provided the power supply can keep up uh, running both channels which I imagine it probably can do um, it's a hefty power supply in these Technics amplifiers it will draw about 600 650 watts plus from the mains um, so definitely a good power supply. Uh, we will be looking at somewhere in the region of 500, 520 watts RMS output from this old school Technics amp rated at 90 times 2 at 8 ohms. Superb stuff. One last test I want to do is change the frequency from 50 hertz to 2000 hertz and see whether that makes a difference to the power output, whether it's greater or less at the higher frequency. So all hooked up, still at 2 ohms. Let's go ahead and turn up the volume. Okay, what do we have there? 288 watts. So that is a little bit higher than down at 50 hertz which is interesting uh, it's a full range amplifier that's not a bad thing that means that the mid range and the highs will be uh, you know well within its playable power range for most speakers I don't know any real high range like full range speakers there uh, that you know will struggle on this amount of power per channel so fantastic so guys I hope you have enjoyed the video and have been suitably surprised as I have at the output of these old school amplifiers and um, the quality of power there from these. Um, always we thought that they did more power than rated and now we are able to prove that uh, with a little bit more knowledge over the years and a few more bits of kit. So guys stay tuned to my channel if you liked the video and uh, there's lots more things coming this way um, if, with audio experiments and all sorts of build logs and stuff like that so hit the subscribe button if you're interested and stay tuned.